Good morning, everyone. Good morning. <laughs> Power Life TV channel, Power Life TV broadcast. We are restoring families with Pastor Brian. And Pastor Tasha. Here to give you another great broadcast. It's Friday. Friday. <laughs> this is the day that the Lord has made. We, we will, will rejoice, rejoice and be glad in it. I have thoroughly enjoyed my week. Have you? Yep. I have. What a wonderful subject we're dealing with. Mm -hmm. Communication and talking about the spirit of gentleness and talking about uh, the, the four horsemen. That has really blessed me. Really? Yeah, that, that's really blessed me. Just, well, this is the first year that we just really kind of talked about it from that angle. Yeah. So yeah. I'm glad you like it. It's, it's really good. It's really good. It's always good to get a refresher course. Um, we are going to deal with, I believe, the final topic of the Four Horsemen today, but I want to jump into the uh, scriptures. I always want to go back to the scriptures, and uh, I believe that what we're reading out of Proverbs chapter 15 and 1 in the Amplified really sets the stage for how we communicate with each other. Now, mm -hmm. one of the things we want you to do is put in the comment section or, you know, type somewhere uh, on the live chat how this series has has helped you you know what is it what has it done to you uh your, your what has it done to your thinking what has it done for your way of seeing things or your viewpoint uh are you are you gonna start applying some of these things i think yeah you know, you know? i can not talk for on behalf of the audience but you know just for myself just the whole idea of you know instead of being doing that whole innocent victimhood thing, mm -hmm. you know, why is everybody always picking on me? Mm -hmm. You know, just to take responsibility. Yeah, you know, on. you have to take responsibility for what you've done instead of blaming other people for what yeah. you've done. Yeah, come on, <laughs> preach, preach up. You cannot blame other people for what you've done. Mm -hmm. And, uh, yeah, you know, good. that was just uh, one of the things that we talked about. That was defensiveness contempt you know that was uh you know attacking a person's sense of self you know that's you know just outright insulting mm -hmm. and you know just the name calling you know we don't realize how dehumanizing mm. wow. those things can be and i noticed that in this culture they call names and call it a joke mm. but wow. yeah that's true Contempt is the wrong kind of culture to build in a marriage. Mm, breach. Yeah. It doesn't work in a yeah. marriage. Yeah. You know, you might have some contemptible relationships and think they work. Yeah. And that's between you and the other person. But when it comes to marriage, it's better to build a culture of appreciation. Yeah. Build a habit of appreciating each other and you have a better chance of success. Yeah. You build a habit yeah. of contempt. Yeah. And, you know, you're very likely to go down a very dark hallway. <laughs> yeah, that's right. You, with your loved one. You know, I want to uh, I want to get into all of those and we want to just kind of run through them again because I love everything you're saying. And one of the, the major things that you're 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 speaking to my, my soul is habit, 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 you know, uh, consistency. And, you know, 23 is going to be a year of consistency. I keep hearing the Lord tell me that. Mm. It's going to be a year of consistency. Are you going to be consistent with what I tell you to do? You right. Uh, because you do create a culture with consistency. You really do. And so let's get into the scripture. Uh, let's go ahead and put it back up there again. Proverbs 15 and 1. Uh, 1 and 2 in the Amplified class. Do you want to read that? Sure. Uh, a soft answer turns away wrath, but grievous words stir up anger. Mm, okay. Uh, the tongue of the wise utter knowledge rightly, but the mouth of the self-confident fool pours out folly yeah, or foolishness. Good. Good. The eyes of the Lord are in every place, keeping watch upon the evil and the good. A gentle tongue with its healing power is a tree of life, mm. but willful contrariness in it breaks down the spirit. You know, the, 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 the part in verse 3, the eyes of the Lord are in every place, keeping watch upon the evil and the good. That, to me, is accountability. <laughs> and on Wednesday night, we talked about how a disciplined person mm -hmm. will be, be accountable and be mm -hmm. responsible you know when i look at uh going back to the subject of being 
uh, consistent and having a habit and creating culture. If you're not disciplined in certain areas, mm -hmm. if you're not accountable in certain areas, mm -hmm. you put no demand on your life for change. So true. But here's the bad thing. If you put no demand on your life for change, change will happen. It'll but be it'll, thrust upon you. But it won't be for the good. Right. It'll be for the bad, mm -hmm. you know? And so we want to take these tools, take this take this information that we're we're hearing and learning and, uh, and and begin to get consistent with it. Now, somebody's looking for an overnight success. This is not an overnight success. This is something that you have to apply to your life daily because you've been taught in a certain manner. Right. And so you're going to have to renew your mind. Right. Reprogram your mind with the word of God. So, so true. let's let's uh, get into what the Lord is showing you in this subject on the four horsemen. Well, um, I wanted to do a quick review, but instead we can go straight to the subject for today. We can go, we can do a quick review. I, I would love to do that. Oh, okay. Well, I, I already started it. Yeah. Right. <laughs> this is what happens when we don't put our heads together in the beginning. It's okay. We can repeat. So we I had. Think they don't mind if we repeat. So we had criticism, which is the one that I didn't talk about, um, which is to verbally attack a person's uh, character. Mm -hmm. And you know, criticism could be you know really the death of a relationship. Wow. It doesn't have to be a marriage. Mm -hmm. you, you go around criticizing everything. You know, um, attacking a person. Attacking character. a person. You know, you never do anything right. You're so lazy. You're mm. just a bum. This kind of thing. Wow. You're so selfish. You you only think about yourself. You keep doing that. You know, you're not gonna have many people who want to hang around you. Mm. And mm. Uh, the thing about criticism, I talked about this before, good. is that uh, criticism affects a part of the brain called the hippocampus. Mm. The hippocampus not. It's hurt by criticism. Mm. It's hurt by mm. the words of criticism that come out of your mouth. Yeah. In other words, it's hurting you to hurt other people. Mm. Okay? Yeah. But there is a hormone that is excreted in the blood when you do mm. criticize. Yeah. And it's a sort of a dopamine. Mm. I think it's a, a dopamine mm -hmm. that is released into your bloodstream that likes the feeling wow so it's it's a it's a self um it's a meal that turns itself yeah mm -hmm. but it's a hurt meal yeah that's the and same with complaining huh? meal. complaining criticizing yeah that's the same thing yeah it hurts so good mm -hmm. yeah it yeah. hurts so good yeah and um wow it's something that's going to hurt the person doing it and the person who re who's on the other end of criticism yeah yeah, the, the thing that I, I, I'm thinking about is uh, when a person is overly critical, they begin to attack the core of, of another person. That's exactly and, right. And, and one of the things that you, you never want to do is attack a person's core. Like, for instance, uh, if a person is consistently lying, we may call that person a liar. Yeah. Well, if that is not who they truly are, maybe they're you know, born again, their true nature is righteous. Right. So to call that person a liar mm -hmm. is an attack on their character. Right, absolutely. So what we want to do is we want to, you know, not so much attack them and call them that, but but remind them of who they truly are. Mm -hmm. You know, you, you're a righteousness. You're a good, let me put it in our terms. You're a good wife. You know, mm -hmm. um, you're not a critical person. Right. You know, right. And so, you know, let's, if there's anything I can do to help you, right? You know, if I can help you in this situation, let me help you. But, mm -hmm. but to constantly attack and say, you're so mean, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. something's wrong with you, right? Well, you, you know, know, the thing about you know what I said about the hippocampus the more you criticize, the, the more, more you, you want to. Want to. Mm -hmm. So a person, you know, who criticizes, just know that the more you criticize, the more, you the more you're gonna want to. Mm -hmm. You know, right. so it's going to be, you know, if you don't stop yourself from being critical, if you don't mm -hmm. stop yourself from complaining, you're going to become a complainer. Yeah. You're right. going to become a critical person. Mm -hmm. And so, but if you live with a person who's critical, you know, what is the antidote yeah, for good. criticism? Yeah. Well, the, the antidote is to start making statements using I, I words. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think... 
I feel. Mm -hmm. I That's think so I feel. So I feel that, you know, and then express a positive need, mm -hmm. you know, and I know that one to me, it could be hard for a person to understand what I'm saying, but here's an example of an antidote. Mm -hmm. I'm feeling left out of our talk tonight. I, I feel like I need to vent. Mm -hmm. Can we that's please good. talk about my day? Mm -hmm. You know, and that's expressing a need. Yeah. That's not really, it's, it's making a, a complaint in a way, but it's making a gentle complaint. Yeah. I'm feeling a certain way. Mm -hmm. I'm, you know, I, I feel imbalanced today. You know, and the person might be calling you names. You know, yeah. you always talk yeah. about yourself. You know, yeah. you're always so selfish. You know, uh, I'm I'm feeling unbalanced today. Uh, I, I need to vent. Can mm -hmm. we just talk about my day? Mm -hmm. Can yeah. we talk about my day? Yeah. And um, that's one antidote mm -hmm. for criticism. Right. Now I mentioned the other two: contempt, contempt and defensiveness. Right. But one thing we have not talked about is stonewalling. Okay. Let's look at that today. Yeah. So stonewalling, to stonewall, I think a lot of us could understand this mm -hmm. uh, just from the term. Yeah. The term stonewalling means to uh, emotionally withdraw mm. from a conversation. Mm. And we often stonewall with our cell phones. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> or in this uh, uh, video game age, we, we stonewall by going to play video games. Right. <laughs> yeah, or right. watch TV. Right. Oh, yeah. that's so true. Mm -hmm. So we'll, you know, we'll get out, we'll avoid a conflict by watching the game. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We'll avoid a conflict by listening to the radio. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Whatever it takes to put in some disapproval, a little bit of distance, and a little bit of separation from yeah. a conflict, wow. that's stonewalling. Yeah. This is huge because when we when we're when we're shining the flashlight on something, we don't know what it is. We just don't. We know we don't like the feeling, you know. Right. And so we're gonna do whatever it takes to make us feel good. Yeah. <laughs> I hope I said that right. But uh, stonewalling is a way of just just uh, taking a break from it all. Yes. You know what I mean? Well, if you're in the middle of a conflict that, yeah, yeah. and and you refuse to. You know, say talk about the issue or talk about the yeah, problem. It, yeah. Sometimes you're just holding the problem hostage. Mm. Are you holding the person hostage? Are you holding the person hostage? That's you never good. give them an yeah. opportunity to process. Mm -hmm. But you know, there are times that a conflict can get so big and so heated and so angry and so upset that even if you're not a person who naturally stonewalls, you'll become a person who stonewalls. Mm -hmm. You know, because mm -hmm. of the height of the conflict mm -hmm. you know you'll start to shut down and you you know you always got one of two people yeah you, you, you know you have the person who fights mm -hmm. and you have the first the person who flees yeah yeah you know and in a conflict there's one who sometimes will will make a bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger stink mm -hmm. you know yeah so that's the skunk that's the skunk <laughs> <laughs> and then there's the other one who says I don't want to have anything to do with this. Mm. I don't have enough words for what's happening right now. I'm feeling flooded. I'm about mm. to take legs and run. run. Yeah. That's or, the, or retreat. Or retreat. Yeah, go into a shell. So it could be a runner. Yeah. Could be a rabbit. Yeah. Or it could be a turtle. Yeah. Going one who into goes shell. into their shell. Mm -hmm. Rather than deal with the issue, they go into an emotional shell. Now, this is interesting because. Um, for the person that's on the other side, mm. and they're and they're, they're the skunk, and they're constantly wanting, you know, to pull things out. Let's talk about this, and you know, this is what happened. Wouldn't that cause more strife? Mm -hmm. The person that's stonewalling wouldn't that cause cause more strife for the one that's wanting to talk and get it out and do those kind of things. Uh, yeah, there there are times that a person stonewalling can cause a, the other person to uh, get stronger mm, in the yeah. argument and aggressive, more aggressive. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Mm -hmm. You know, you've heard of um, 
uh, in this, when we were doing this study years ago, they talked about a lady who was trying to talk to her husband. And so he put the game on. Mm. And so she got herself a, a hammer and oh, she she that, hit yeah. that TV with yeah. the hammer. So yeah. she she escalated the argument. Yeah. You know. Yeah, exactly. And so uh yeah, it could get worse. Mm. It, mm. it most certainly can get worse. But uh there is an antidote for stonewalling. Mm. And you know, when they were doing the research, mm. when the Grotmans were doing the the research, when the couple would start escalating to a point of stonewalling, mm. what they did is they pretended that the cameras were, were, were broken. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. They said, oh, give us, give us about 30 minutes. We need to fix our equipment, but don't talk to each other. Yeah. Wow. We're going to pick up where we left off. Mm -hmm. And so they would hand them each a magazine mm -hmm. or, you know, give them something to do that would take their mind off of the argument. Wow. Wow. Hmm. And what they found is in 30 minutes, mm -hmm. when they would come back to the table mm -hmm. to talk about it, they had a more positive conversation, mm -hmm. they had more pleasant words, mm -hmm. and they could finish speaking in a positive manner. That, this is interesting. This is, now, uh, you know, we, we're very transparent. Yeah, I know. <laughs> But I know in the past we've had issues, and oh, yeah. and, um, and it's like you have this uh, Tabasco sauce running through your through your blood. You <laughs> well, know? you know, here's the thing: the best couples are not the ones who don't ever argue. Yeah, the best couples are the ones who argue well. Argue well, yeah. But here's what I was thinking as you were speaking. You know, I remember there there have been times that we will quote unquote take a time out. Mm -hmm. You know, we'll just kind of retreat. We'll go, I'll go and 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 maybe turn on whatever, or you go do this, get on the phone, you know, whatever happens. And it's almost like it's a reset of my brain. It's a reset, most definitely. And and one of the things I like to do is just get along with the Lord, just talk to him. He always tells me how wrong I am and how right you are, you know. But <laughs> that's why I was like, Lord, I don't even want to talk to you today. I don't want to hear what you got to say, you know. But but it, it, it really does reset the brain. And I know somebody needed to hear this today because you, there may be a time when you're in a conflict that you need that time out. Right. <laughs> you do need to go maybe just read a book or take a shower I think or take a run. I think it's funny that you think that the Lord only tells you that you're wrong because I feel like a lot of times I'm wrong. Yeah, well, you know, he, he, he has no sides. He he takes over. Right, he does. He, he, he's our leader. <laughs> there is no leader in this home but Jesus. So. Right. But uh, this is very fascinating to me, and I think this is a good talk because... It, it helps me understand now why things happen the way they happen. Why you have this, uh, what we call, uh, physiological uh, response, reset, and self yeah. self soothing. You know, right. I, I go and soothe myself, and I think about, okay, I'm wrong in this situation. Well, yeah. you know, it doesn't work that way for all people. All people, yeah, I know. But you know, sometimes when a person takes a timeout or does a reset. The devil will get on one shoulder <laughs> and tell them everything that's wrong with yeah, their partner. That's true. That's I, true. Truth be told. Yeah. So you know, in that time, we always. I love what Joyce Meyer says. She she says this. Sometimes you have to think about what you're thinking mm -hmm. about. Mm -hmm. That's good. You know, and yeah. when you're having a, a argument that has, you know, kind of gotten to a point of fight or flight, you know, and you know, somebody's emotionally withdrawing, make an agreement with each other. You say, just say this to each other. Mm -hmm. You know what? Let's just take a, a break. Yeah. Let's take a give 20. Me, give me a minute. Yeah. Give me 20 minutes. Yeah. Give me a 20 minute break. That's good. And then rather than think about everything that's wrong, mm -hmm. um, uh, there's another family of psychologists, the Smallies, what they say to do is pull out the list. Mm. Now, uh, very often we will have couples to make a list of all the traits they like mm -hmm. about their spouse. Mm -hmm. And they don't know it's a setup for when they have an argument. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because you should keep that list yeah. Yeah, that's for right. when you're having an argument right. and you've forgotten everything mm -hmm. you like about them. All you can think about is what they've done wrong. Mm -hmm. And they say, pull out the list. Mm -hmm. That's Look right. at the list. Yeah. Remember the list. Mm -hmm. 
And, you know, I think that could be a great tool. I think it won't work for everybody because I think a lot of people, while it sounds good, they won't actually do it. Yeah. Uh, there are some yeah. people who are so vigilant and so mm -hmm. diligent. And I know for me and you, we work on our marriage. Yeah, We're that's true. constantly, we don't really like to be in conflict with, e with each other. Mm -hmm. And if we are, we just kind of want to get the argument done mm -hmm. so that we can go back to being friends. Mm -hmm. That's you know? right. That's true. And, and so, you know, I think that, you know, you have to find the technique that works best. Mm -hmm. But I think to emotionally disengage, go read a book, go do something that completely takes your mind off of the situation. Mm -hmm. I think it's a smart idea for some people. Now, the foundation, and, and I know our time is running out, but the foundation to all of this, and I want to just, I want you to finish reading the antidote, uh, is friendship. Mm. All of them. All of them. All of them. All of them. You know, if I'm not your friend, then I don't want to work it out. Mm. Mm. Um, the problem that I find in a lot of relationships is that they take each other for granted. Mm. If friendship is not the foundation, I tend to take you for granted. So true. You know, I, I and the thing, and the reason why I believe friendship is so important is because we will treat a stranger better than we will treat our own. Preach. Blood. Yes. And so develop the relationship of friendship. Mm. Date when you're dating, don't date to mate. That's right. Date for discovery. Y'all know this. Y'all heard this before. Uh, but I'll say it until Jesus comes back. You need to learn how to date for discovery. Yeah. And learn one another. You know, fall in love with each other's essence. And then you you begin to you know, get closer to one another, but become friends. So I know I've said a lot, uh, but I want to hear the antidote to stonewalling. So the stonewaller will make statements like this. Look, we've been through this over and over again. Uh, I'm tired of reminding you. Mm -hmm. And then they're done. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. But the person who wants to use the antidote, mm -hmm. the antidote, mm -hmm. the thing that will combat stonewalling will say something like this. Honey, I'm sorry for to interrupt you, but I'm feeling overwhelmed. Yeah. Remember, go back to yeah, to making not you statements, but I statements. Yeah, that's good. I think I feel I'm feeling overwhelmed, and I need to take a break. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, can good. you give me 20 minutes, and then can we talk? Yeah. Can I have 20 minutes? Yeah, that's that's so good, and I and I, I think that that's a good way to. Um, you know, close this session on communication because one of the things that I learned in our time of communicating and working on our marriage is I needed to learn how to talk more than I felt. Mm -hmm. I hear what I just said. I didn't feel like talking. Mm -hmm. Right. Whenever we had a conflict, you did not want to talk about it. No, and most men don't. Right. You know, uh, we we have this thing in our brain where we shut off at about five o'clock in the afternoon. <laughs> And it's like, don't talk to me anymore. Well, all we need is a good football game yeah. or a good basketball game. Yeah, give me my easy, <laughs> easy boy, and I want to just relax. You know, I don't want to, I don't have to think. Right. And, and I think it's because you're talking about the lazy boy. A, a lazy boy, easy boy, whatever, same thing. <laughs> just a recliner. Tomato, right? tomato. <laughs> but we have to, we have to, it learn to enter into each other's world. To, to break the criticism, to break the contempt, to break the defensiveness, defensiveness, to break the stonewalling, we have to learn to enter into each other's world. Yeah. Find find out what the other person has need of. What are the points of agreement in our marriage? What mm -hmm. are the points of agreement in our friendship? Mm -hmm. And I think one so of the good. best things that, you know, sometimes when you're raising children and you're working and you're, you know, just so stressed, it's hard to have fun in marriage, mm -hmm. you know? It's hard to take time out mm -hmm. to say, just go on a date. But one thing that we did learn is to find times That's at so least once a week, yeah. you know, just yeah. at least once a week, just find time for each other. Mm -hmm. And during that time, that's not the time to talk about the light bill. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's not the time to talk about you know, the soccer game and what happened at the soccer, or to go down the grocery list. Mm -hmm. It's a time to focus on each other, mm -hmm. forget about your problems, and enjoy each other. Yeah. Don't you talk know? about your job. Talk Don't about, talk about yeah, your job. Yeah, that's good. 
you know, and a lot of people have not learned how to disengage from the life or the stress of life. Mm -hmm. You know, they could do it with their girl girlfriends or they could do it with their, you know, their yeah. buddies, yeah. but it's hard to do it with each other because so you good. haven't built a friendship. So good. And when you build a friendship, you find that, you know, you'll, you'll laugh together. It's not that mm -hmm. the problems go away. It's mm -hmm. that, you know, you remember what's right, mm -hmm. what's going well. So good. That's mm -hmm. so good. Well, we're going to have to stop right there. I pray that y'all receive this word today. I, I have thoroughly enjoyed all that we've uh, talked about, all that I've heard, you know, <laughs> things that would bring me, uh, bring remembrance to my heart uh, of of what we've learned and what we've what we've gone through, uh, I believe our relationship is stronger. Yes, because of what we know. Right, and you know Ephesians four and twenty four says this: mm. speaking the truth in That's good. love. That's good. That's good. That's good. Speaking the truth in love. What What about speaking the truth in love? It has healing powers. Mm -hmm. Positive words can heal a broken relationship. Why? Because your behavior follows your words, not the other way around. Mm -hmm. Now, if you find yourself complaining, you're allowing your, your you know, the, the stress of this world to rule your life. But if you make positive confessions, if you say the, the right words, then your life can follow the words that proceed from your lips. Mm -hmm. so you have to feed your heart faith. Mm -hmm. And one of the ways you do it is through positive communication. Yeah, that's so good. Well, I want to I wanna close it with this today. Listen, we're, we're talking about communication. We're talking about right words. Mm -hmm. And you will never, and I repeat, never <laughs> get to a place of seeing truth. Right. Until you learn that you must confess Christ as your Lord and your Savior. Listen, uh, these things won't work if Christ is not your Lord. That's right. And so uh, we're going to give you an invitation today. If you are watching us for the first time or if you watching us for the 300th time and, you know, you say, I've, I've gone to church. I've heard about Jesus, but I've never been formally introduced to Jesus. Mm -hmm. I would like for you to know him today. Listen, there is not enough good that you can do or not enough bad that you can do mm -hmm. to, to uh, get into the kingdom of God. You must believe on him. That's right. You must believe in, in what he's accomplished for you. That's Listen, right. Jesus paid a debt that you couldn't pay. Yeah, yeah, that's right. He, he... He confessed you before the Father by faith. Mm -hmm. And when you confess him before your brothers and sisters, guess what? You're going to be born again. Amen. And so we want you to, if you haven't already confessed Christ, I want you to say a prayer with us. Say, oh God in heaven. Oh God in heaven. Today. Today. I believe that Jesus Christ. I believe that Jesus Christ. Came to the earth. Came to the earth. Died for my sins. Died for my sins. And was raised from the dead. And was raised from the dead. I repent of my past. I repent of my past. I turn away. I turn away. From all that I've done. From all that I've done. And I turn to. And I turn to. My Father God. My Father God. Take my life, Lord. Take my life, Lord. Do something with it. Do something with it. Feel me, Lord. Feel me, Lord. With your Holy Spirit. With your Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Listen, if you said that prayer for the first time, we welcome you. You know, you want to have a great relationship? Start with Jesus. Amen. Amen. I pray that you would uh, let us know if you said that prayer for the first time. Send us an email to info412.wpc at gmail.com. We would love to talk to you and send you some information. Amen. Amen. Did you enjoy this week? This was, this was great. It was I good. really enjoyed it. It was good. But we always want to give you an opportunity to sow and partner with us. We want to thank everyone that has partnered with us already, our church family and those that are, that are watching us all over the world. Thank you so much. We bless you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We say also to you that uh, every dollar that you sow will go to touch a life for Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Let us Amen. bless the people. The Lord bless you and keep you. The, the Lord, Lord make, make his face shine, shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace. We, we declare shalom and blessings over your life. And we declare that Jesus is Lord and he's upholding all things by the word of his power. Be blessed. We love you. Have a wonderful weekend. We'll see you at church. Bye-bye.